What's up, you guys? It's car time with Tara again. <laughs> hey, so um, carbs. Uh, I want to talk about carbs and keto and fats and all the stigma around high fat, low fat. You know, it's like the high fat crowd looks down on the low fat crowd, and the low fat crowd looks down on the high fat crowd, and it's just it's funny sometimes being in the fitness industry and hearing all the differing opinions of all the different experts and hearing all the things that my clients have been told before they came to me and you know there's a lot of um, gosh there's a lot of ideology around this there's a lot of um, very strong dogma around this and I want to first preface this with the voice of reason of paying attention to what results you get out of a certain approach right so don't neglect the fact that like like my body is not your body your body's not my body your body is not the lady that works with you or your friend or your mom or anybody right so um hi you just started listening to my podcast and you love it thank you i have some really really awesome guests coming up guys so um i don't know if you mean kick ass life which is my mindset podcast with l russ who is um a uh, leader in the paleo space. She hosts the Primal Blueprint podcast for Mark Sisson, and she also co-hosts my Kick-Ass Life Mindset podcast with me. Um, and my Inside Out Health podcast is the one where I interview other health experts, and we got some fun ones coming on. Um, I've got some other health coaches coming on actually pretty soon here that have differing viewpoints than me a little bit, right? Like they're not in the high fat crowd, which um, brings me to this conversation. Um, it's interesting as I've like gone into this low fat approach for this bikini competition, how many of my high fat people are like, Oh my gosh, I feel so sorry for you. You know? Um, <laughs> and, um, some of, you know, my more lower fat people, like they're just like, mm. when people talk about high fat, they're like, why, why, you know? And so there's all these like different opinions. Um, and I'll, I'll share my experience with you guys. Now, this is my opinion. Um, this also, I'm going to share a quote from Charles Poliquin, who um, passed about a year or two ago. But um, he used to say this about carbs. He used to talk about really needing to earn your carbs, and he used to say that a lot of people don't they don't deserve two licks of a dried prune is the phrase that he would use because he's like, unless you are active, unless you are lean, unless you have muscle, you don't really need that many carbs, right? He was a big fan of the meat and nuts breakfast he made popular um, and starting your day with protein and fats to keep yourself in a good like blood sugar um, set up all day. But that doesn't mean like, like I'll be real with you guys. I could start my day with carbs. Um, I would always pair protein with it for sure, but um, I could start my day with carbs and be just fine. I'm very, very insulin sensitive. I'm very, very active. Um, I, I'm very lean. And basically what I'm trying to say here is the leaner and more active you are, the more tar carb tolerant you become. So if you have low, low muscle mass, and you're very sedentary, you don't need very many carbs. That's why a lot of people who are sedentary and have a lot of body fat, sorry, I just connected to my Wi-Fi, I just went to my garage. Um, that's why a lot of people who are um, have more body fat, they're not very active, they don't have a lot of muscle, they do great with keto, right? Because they just don't need very many carbs. They're just not going through them. So I want you to think about the inside of your body, okay? So see these see these muscles. Okay. <laughs> that was like a mm, shameless, like, like bicep flex, but these muscles, these are, I call these, um, calorie absorbers or carb absorbers. Okay. These are my carb absorbers that I've built for myself that I go use every single day in the gym to absorb more carbs. Right? So if you don't have very many carb absorbers that when you eat carbs, they go to refill what you used in exercise every day, you don't need that many carbs. Right? Um, let me see. There was a comment here. Um, you're also training for your first bikini competition. So you're really loving following my journey. Awesome. And we're on the same road. I actually do well with high carbs. Never realized it until I started training for the contest. Yeah, because you're probably somewhat lean and very active and lifting weights and in the gym every day. And if that's you, guess what? You get to eat lots of carbs and you will probably actually do better with a higher carb, lower fat approach. That unless you have like inflammation issues, right? Those are the, the rare people that I see that are very like have kind of my body composition. They're lean, they're muscular, but they love keto. Usually those people are the ones that have some sort of inflammatory stuff going on inside their body where they just do better, like being in ketosis or being on this um, low carb approach. But I'll say if you're going to do that, if you're going to be like keto and you want to have muscle, 
like you're gonna need to eat protein like you're going to need to lift your ass off and you're going to need to eat a lot of protein that's why in the keto community the only people I see that really look like freaking amazing are generally carnivore people because they're eating so much um, protein and they're lifting like a mother you know like the Danny Vegas out there like they and, and Maura his wife they look amazing they eat a lot of protein, right? And they lift like crazy. So it doesn't just happen for free. You can't just go keto and expect to look, sorry, but like look like this, like look like you have a ton of muscle and lean and all that. You gotta earn that. <laughs> and if you're gonna do it with keto, you need you need a lot of protein. But I would say, is it easier? If you want this kind of physique, if you want muscle and leanness, is that easier with carbs? Hell yes, it is. Hell yes, it is. It is a lot easier. And you are earning, you are truly, you are earning those carbohydrates through your activity. Um, now, I'm, I'm not saying like go have activity and then like go freaking bananas and eat at a calorie excess. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not going to be eating at a calorie excess. I will be going in there and having my half cup of rice and some vegetables and some mahi mahi. Okay. So I'm not talking like now I get to go have pizza and donuts. That's not what I'm doing. I'm talking some carbs, right? Um, what type of carbs do you recommend when you can tolerate them? Great question. Um, so I am a big fan of whole food carbohydrates, anything that comes from nature. And I am not opposed to um, rice. I have been eating rice all on this journey. And I'm, I don't know what I am, probably like somewhere around 12% body fat right now. So like you can eat rice and not be fat. I shared this, I have a book coming out. I, I've told you guys on how to bring carbohydrates back in after keto. It's coming out at the end of this year. And um, I share a lot about rice in there. I, I love, I like, uh, I like stirring the pot because we were like, oh, rice is so bad for you. It's so, it's in, it spikes your blood sugar. It's terrible, like don't eat rice. Yet I share in the book that in China, they eat more rice than any other country in the world and their obesity rate is five to six percent and it is inflated by the cities that have American fast food restaurants so it would be low which is like 20 to 30 percent in those cities so without America coming in and screwing things up they'd be eating rice all day every day and they'd be like less than five percent obesity rate in their country so it's not rice it is not the rice and um, look at every like freaking physique competitor they live off rice <laughs> so it's not um, rice this is a bad thing sorry I'm getting on a little tangent but it's not rice rice is not the problem it's a calorie excess it's processed foods it's all that um, yeah I have been using jasmine rice um, uh, for this this competition recently um, so uh, anyway uh, other than that any carbohydrate source from nature ideally shoot first for the ones that aren't um, fruit, right? Like if you're really wanting to get lean, you can have fruits. It's just that it is fructose. It is processed like sugar. So like tr try first to get rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Uh, yep. Sweet potatoes are great. Um, I love like purple potatoes, both the like non-sweet ones and the, oh my gosh, purple sweet potatoes are like, blah, blah, blah. I could like live off of those for the rest of my life. Um, and I just kind of keep it simple guys. That's, those are like my go-to carbohydrate sources. Um, I am like one of my meals on, I'm on a meal plan right now. One of them does have rice cakes for like two rice cakes though, guys, this is like 14 grams of carbohydrates. Okay. So that's the other thing to consider, right? It's like when we say carbohydrates, people think like pizza and like chips and like, you know, it's like, it's not that exciting <laughs> when you're, I, this is like what I teach in my keto in and out program where I'm teaching you how to go through keto and bring carbs back in. I'm like, when you bring carbs back in, it's not going to feel that different than keto. It's not like goody, goody gumdrops. Now I'm just going to eat all the things that I wanted to eat when I was five. It's going to feel like a vegetable stir fry with some chicken in it for lunch. And then like maybe later for dinner, you're going to have like a potato with dinner. And like, it's not like crazy amounts of carbs. Um, you have one rice cake on your meal plan. <laughs> I know one of my meals is two, two dry rice cakes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is how you get yourself to drink water. <laughs> do I have a lifting program? Yeah. For my bikini competition. I do. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I have lifting programs, um, my own programs, but if you're talking about for the bikini competition, I'm doing what my coach has for me. But I know so many of you have been like, can you just show us like how to get that lean, like with, from like a more bodybuilder approach. So when I'm done with this, I will share, I will share all the things that I've done the way I've eaten. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry guys. My, my connection keeps going slow. 
Um, it's because I'm like in my garage and I'm all good. Holy cow, sorry guys. Um, white rice versus brown rice. So on my meal plan, he actually has me on white rice. I bought brown rice. White rice um, will spike your blood sugar generally a little faster than brown rice but you can't know that for sure. You should get a continuous glucose monitor if you guys want to know for sure. Um, I have a link for one in my bio. It's um, NutriSense. It's super fascinating. It hooks up to an app on your phone and you can see your blood sugar response to everything. Um, thank you for the good luck with my competition. I appreciate that. But um, yeah, so, so guys, uh, have you discussed how the everyday keto person can become metabolically flexible to run off both and feel good both ways? Yeah. I mean, that is like what my keto in and out is all about. And so there's a, there's a training aspect to it, right? So we have to change the environment inside of our body if we want our body to react differently to foods. So that's why you see people who are like really lean and jacked and they're like, oh, like, like leg day, re carb load or whatever. And they're like eating like cheesecake and, and donuts. And you're like, what the crap? Like, how do you look like that? And you eat that stuff. Like, I don't get it because they freaking, they, they have changed the environment inside their body. They have a lot of muscle mass and they're also going into the gym and they're like, this is how I like to look at it. You're like taking all the stores in here, this, your glycogen stores, the stored carbohydrate, and you're dumping it into your bloodstream to fuel your workout. So what does that leave you with? Space. Space and these little carb absorbers right here. So when you go eat more carbs, they go to refill these little tanks, these little glycogen tanks all over your body and your muscles, right? And what? And when they do that, they also shuttle amino acids into your muscles to help with repair. So this is how we have to create a, a, a physique that requires carbohydrates. If you have no muscle and you're never really like, like think of the energy demand that you need to just sit on your butt all day. It's really low. It's really low. And you have no muscle so your, your metabolism slower anyway. So the only way that you can really like be able to have a body that can tolerate carbohydrates is you've got to build muscle. And you've got to get in the gym and actually use carbohydrates more often and be consistent. So doing keto is awesome. This is why I teach this because it, I want a body that can just do whatever. I want it to be super resilient. If it runs off, it run, if I run out of carbohydrates, I don't want to be dying. I want to be able to still perform like a boss. So doing stuff like keto can help you with that. You train your body how to, how to manage no matter what it's got coming in. That's definitely helped me in athletic performance big time, right? So if like you're a runner or a triathlon athlete or a marathoner and like you want to be able to just be free and your body can just perform like a boss no matter what it's got coming in, do a phase of keto. So you adapt your body. It doesn't freak out. It doesn't hit. It does. You don't bonk, right? It's just like, oh, I know what to do. We'll just go into these fat stores and use those because it's been trained to do that well. But also like I don't want to be pigeonholed into not ever being able to eat carbohydrates again in my life. And so I have created a body that can tolerate carbohydrates by building muscle. So, um, it's short answer. You want a metabolically flexible body. Um, one, you got to eat at a calorie restriction. Sometimes if you're not eating at a calorie restriction consistently, like your body constantly has energy excess that does not create a metabolically flexible body. All right. The other thing is build muscle. So be at a calorie deficit sometimes freaking go ham on muscle building, high intensity interval training. Like I'll share like today I went in, I just wanted to get some cardio in today. So I did 30 minutes of pretty freaking intense intervals on the stair mill. And then I ran a mile as fast as I could and I have not eaten yet. Right? So my body is like, it's 12 PM right now at the time of recording this. So like my body right now is at a deficit. I'm already at a deficit. I was already at a deficit yesterday. So I'm like that performance, like it's come, coming out of fat stores basically. Right. But I've trained my body to be able to do that. But guess what? I'm going to make some carbohydrates right now. Do you think those are going to go to fat stores? Especially when I only eat, I think I'm going to double up my meal. Um, cause I'm taking my kids up in the Canyon, but I'm going to eat one cup of rice. Okay. So do you think that one cup of rice is going to make me fat? No. What is it going to do? It's going to go into my muscles to help fuel my exercise performance tomorrow. So that's how we do it. Um, all right. That's all guys. Um, basically in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say here is when you are active and you are lean and you have muscle, you're 
unless you have something really particular going on in your body, you're not going to need to be keto and it's probably not going to be optimal to be keto. It's going to be optimal to eat carbohydrates and probably like pretty dang lower fat, right? So it switches. It does. It switches. So if you're starting out obese, like I keep in mind, like I would go keto, I would go keto for a long time, <laughs> right? But as you're, as you're getting more strong and you're getting leaner, you're going to want to start making that transition into switching those um, macros into more of a higher carb, lower fat approach that it just works plain and simple. All right. Have a great Sunday, guys. I'm going to go up in the canyon. Micah, are you ready? Micah's ready. He's in, his, he's in his underwear, so I won't, we, won't, we won't show Micah, but he's ready for the canyon. <laughs> we're going to maybe get some cold therapy if we're feeling brave and picnic. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. Bye.